A couple of days ago, this paper came out. Now, it's about extracting gold using waste milk. But of course, like all of these things, that's a headline and an attention grabber, and it's a bit more to it than that. But in order to make this sponge that they used, they're using whey. Whey is what's left over after cheese production. When you've taken all the fat and big proteins, the casein, out, you're left with whey. And whey is just a lot of liquid and some more different kinds of milk proteins, actually globulins. If you dry that, you'll get whey powder. And of course, whey powder is what you can nip down to the bodybuilding shop and buy yourself a massive tub of if you want. Milk proteins don't actually dissolve in water. They're, they're an emulsion. They're stirred throughout it and they're so small that they don't drop back out again. You can make them do that by adding rennet or an alkali, which is how you make cheese, or you can make them string out as little strings instead of being held into globules by adding a tiny bit of acid. And of course, that's exactly what they did in the paper. They added a bit of hydrochloric acid to the whey powder, making those proteins string out into long strings. Then they added something called a crosslinker because if you took that acidic solution back down to the basic, it would again curl up. But if you join them together, basically not those strings, they'll stay as strings. And so they added a carboxylic acid to join the protein strands together to make a network of protein in an awful lot of water. Then you freeze dry it. You freeze it and freeze dry it to give yourself an aerofoam. And this aerofoam is now made of proteins. And proteins have a very peculiar property. One thing they'll do is they will make heavy atoms stick to them. So they're brilliant at doing that job. And of course, gold is heavy. And so using that foam with gold is an ideal thing to do, but really only in an industrial situation because it only does that if the gold is already in solution. And of course, in industry, there's lots of times when there's gold wash from, may, uh, from um, mining tilings that you want to reclaim the gold from, and you wash it through that foam and you'll be able to recover any gold atoms that you would otherwise miss. Now, at the moment, what they use to do that is um, charcoal. And charcoal, of course, is uh, very energy intensive to produce and quite destructive, whereas a milk foam is using a waste product, which we have tons of anyway, and it's easy to recover the gold just by burning away the proteins and you're left with your gold. So in industry, it looks like a brilliant solution. For home use, though, it's a little bit different. Because people who are interested in collecting gold from scrap are usually talking about things like circuit boards, computer parts, um, connection pins, telephones, that sort of thing. There's already a pretty good method if you want to do that, which involves chopping up the circuit boards and putting them in a solution of vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and ordinary table salt. What that does is actually attacks the copper, the tin and the solder that's holding the gold on top of the circuit board. It eats those away, which is why the solution goes its usual blue colour, and the gold flakes float off and you're left with scrap boards and a blue sludge. You wash that, collect the gold, and then you dissolve the gold in household bleach. Household bleach is sodium hypochlorate with a little bit of acid, some more vinegar, and a little bit of sodium bicarbonate to buffer that solution, the gold will dissolve in that sodium hypochlorite solution. Then what you normally do is add a little bit of sulfuric acid to get rid of any lead that might be in there, boil it down a little bit so it's a bit more concentrated, add some vitamin C, and your gold will precipitate out as gold, which you can then filter and smelt and get your gold out there. Uh, it is a brilliant solution. I mean, pun not intended, you are left with a sludge of copper, lead, tin, acetate, as well as lots of circuit boards, and about a kilo of circuit boards will get you about 0.8 grams of gold, something like that. But as a hobby and something to do, and as an interesting solution that's easy to do, it's pretty good. But in terms of then having to make a, an aerofoam to do that job, because the aerofoam will only extract gold from solutions, you have to get it to the solution stage. So all of that work is still going to go on. Instead of adding vitamin C, you drop the foam in. That's about the only difference between the two. 
Given that the amount of money you make from gold reclamation from such things is so tiny, it would be questionable whether you actually wanted to do it. But of course, in industry, when they do that, they use aqua regis. They do a solvent wash over the thing and it would still collect from that. So industry, yes. Home, well, if you want to explore it because it's a bit of fun, I would suspect not. Now, of course, the titling it with gold is one of those things that makes people pay attention. It's gold, of course you're going to pay attention. But it is the result of earlier work. And the earlier work that they did used exactly the same foam to remediate water. That is, they were able just to wash the water through and remove heavy metal toxins and radioactive materials from water. That, to my mind, is a much better use of something like this. Because if you put it in a filter setup, for example, then all you would need to do to remove those toxins, like mercury and lead, is flow it through the foam a couple of times and it will extract those toxins for you. That, I think, is a tremendous use for it. Now, the amount of time washing through and how much foam you wash through it will relate directly back to how many of those toxins are removed. But they report in the paper that 90% of toxins were removed on the first wash. Of course, what you're left with then is a toxic foam that you're going to have to dispose of. But that's going to be true wherever you're going to be removing these from. And certainly, if you're doing the older method, you have an awful lot of sludge to get rid of for your 0.8 grams of gold. So for recovering gold from mine leachings and mine tailings, sure, why not? For home use? Well, unless you have your own freeze dryer, probably not worth the trouble. But far more interestingly, removing toxins from water. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know about this new milk approach to things. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.